Welcome, you're watching Head to Head. I'm Antonina Antosha with UATV. Ukraine has been countering Russian hybrid war for over four years now. During this period, nearly all possible means and tools of influence have been already applied against our country. Despite all odds, Ukrainian society has learned how to confront the Kremlin's propaganda. So what else is needed to be done now and which fake control mechanisms are crucial in the information war? To tell us more on this, we welcome to the studio today Stefan Vermaniv. He is the General Secretary of the Ukrainian World Congress and the Chairman of the Australian Federation of Ukrainian organizations. Hello and thank you for joining us. Thank you. So there has been a hybrid war going on in Ukraine for five years now and Russia is not only using its military force as uh, the aggressor country, it's also using information as one of the tools, as one of the weapons, which are the tools that Russia is currently using except for fake news. Look, I mean, Russia's, um, it's been exposed. It, it has been exposed. The, pro the problem is how do you fight it? Um, and when you look at the Russian propaganda and the money that the Kremlin spends on propaganda, whether it be through Ruski Mir or whether it be whatever, um, it, is, it is very hard to compete. I mean, Ukraine has a problem with competing, but I think the world now recognises, and I think there are a couple of moments that people uh, have identified Russia for what it is. One of those, because I'm from Australia, is obviously MH17 and the way it has dealt with that and the lies that, that, that it says. Yeah. I, often, I often speak about, uh, you know, Putin, um, if you talk to him about him being a painter, um, you know, uh, for him, out of black and white, he will always make grey. He'll always throw a, uh, mm -hmm. something in that says, well, maybe it's not like that. And, you know, in, in the 60s, um, a... Um, a director of a tobacco company when the issue started about non-smoking and yeah. so on, he walked into the boardroom and said, you know what, um, as long as you are able to get people to think about things twice um, and you, 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 you give them uh, something where they're not quite sure, we'll win the battle. And I think what has to, what, what's happening now with Putin is obviously this war, um, we are looking for sanctions from different countries around the world. Um, we still believe one of the best ways to deal with this situation would be to ban the SWIFT system. In other words, bring down the financial, the financial. markets of Russia, mm -hmm. and then you would be able to be able to, to to deal with this. At the moment, this anti uh, anti Ukrainian propaganda, Ukrainian failed state, um, don't deal with Ukraine um, is a real is a real issue. And I think, but I think Ukraine and the Western world are starting to understand who they're dealing with. Um, but there's a lot to be done, you know, in terms of. Um, but wait, how how effective <clears throat> is this propaganda currently? It's been five years. <clears throat> And uh, it's, uh, th there, there has been, n there have been numerous information points saying that Russia is spreading fake news. Mm. And of course, that maybe at the beginning of this war, people would would m believe this information more. What about now? Well, I think um, uh, Putin said there were no Russian boots on the ground. Yeah. <laughs> Yet he took boots. He took the Russian army out. Um, he said that uh, they weren't associated with MH17. Well, we know they have been. Um, he continues to lie, and the system. And what what the West, what we believe the West needs to do, the the international community, is understand that this is a war, not just between Russia and Ukraine. That it is a war. Whilst Putin wants to say it's not a war, it is a war. Yes, it but is. secondly, um, you know, I think Poland and our and our other neighbours um, need to be very very thankful to us to Ukraine because. Ukrainian armed forces are holding off, uh, holding off the Russians. In terms of um, this, the, the information or disinformation, um, if you look at a, a range of issues, Putin will constantly throw you that 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 line that no, it's not like that or it's a grey area or we need to, to consider. Um, we believe that the West and the international community needs to go in harder, stronger, um, in terms of in terms of Putin's sanctions. Um, you know, from I look at it from Australia's point of view. Mm -hmm. Australia's the only country really that's uh, in, initiated two years sanctions. So they're not waiting for something to happen. They're not saying what the Europeans are doing. We'll look at it every six months. He needs to feel that. And I think today that Russian propaganda that, that filters through Russia today, for example, I mean, uh, in England, it's been found out that it is it is lies. It's fake. Yet, uh, with money, mm -hmm. and that's what's happened in Australia, for example. Russia today, we've protested. It's now slowly. Uh, we understand it's going to be taken off. But the initial re uh, reason was, oh yes, but they paid us. Mm -hmm. So you know, are you just as culpable? 
Are you yeah. just as, 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 as a producer of, of news and the person who uh, shows that news, you're as capable? You know, look, um, we had the uh, Invictus Games yep. in Australia uh, recently. <clears throat> um, the Ukrainian representatives, whether it was uh, Ivanka Klimpush or whether it was um, <clears throat> more recently... Uh, uh, Ulyana Suprun and others, um, they have spoken to government people saying, you know, the Australian government, you need to understand that the cyber war is on. Cyber intelligence is, a, is, is an issue. And I know from the point of view of Ukrainian, Australian security services, they see Russian uh, infiltration, Russian uh, uh, looking, uh, the, the Russians looking at the Australian elections very, very seriously. That's right. Russia <coughs> is not only doing harm against Ukraine, Russia is also meddling in foreign elections. Let's yes. talk about France, Germany, the United States of America. Yeah. And that has almost been proven. So basically, Russia is not <coughs> only uh, the neighboring aggressor country towards Ukraine, it's a threat towards not only Europe, but the whole world. Now, how do we deal with that? There are, a lot, <laughs> there are a lot of countries and there are a lot of influential politicians and decision makers who can withstand that. Well, look, I, I think, again, um, the, the governments of the Western world um, need to take a very strong stand. And, and again, you know, we're a community organ, we're a community, we're an NGO, the Ukrainian World Congress, the Australian Federation of Ukrainian Organisations. Yeah. But let me tell you, when Putin came to Australia for the G20 mm -hmm. and to Brisbane, and uh, we lobbied the Australian government not to allow him uh, to come in. Uh, the Australian government told us that, look, it's not our decision. It's, you know, others said that they will have him around the table. Um, mm -hmm. We pressured, they invited him. We put pressure on them and others and said, You've got him at the table now. What are you going to do? Mm -hmm. So what they did, they did the, you, you may have seen um, the, the, the video clips of him eating lunch on his own. Um, our Australian koalas, which are very, very tame, scratched him. Um, they're those sort of they're small messages, but ultimately, from the point of view of the, the G20, for example, yeah. um, I mean, why wouldn't you say, we don't want you here? We have to start ostracizing. We have to start excluding. You can't continue to have him in, at the same place. For example, the Trump, uh, the Trump Putin interview, you know, from Trump's point of view, um, what he tried to do was, you know, here, we're all friends. No, you, you can't. You can't be friends can't with be somebody. You can't be friends with an aggressor country. And exactly. in terms of uh, supporting uh, Ukraine, people have to understand that Ukraine um, is bearing the brunt of this. The, in, in terms of the hybrid war, uh, we need to continue to get uh, Western governments to put pressure. But we believe that one of the best ways would be cut the, uh, cut the financial system. Because, for example, some countries, it's interesting how some countries understand sanctions. Some countries will not sell beef, in other words, cattle, mm -hmm. but they'll sell meat. Yeah. So what's the, where, where's this? And, and they have to go in a lot, a lot harder. And look, Australia, Ukraine, um, you know, we're talking about the fifth anniversary of the re re Revolution of you Dignity. I spent a lot of time here in, in, in Ukraine at that time. Um, the fact is, uh, there are very, very few countries, and I've just done a, another interview and I, I made this point. When people write history, when people write history of this period of time, um, they will see Ukraine in golden lights. That You've had this aggressor who has been a lot stronger, mm -hmm. um, has been a lot more nasty, uh, has been lying, uh, is, is again constantly trying to influence the world. Um, Ukraine withstood it. How many more countries would have withstood um, this situation. So whilst Ukraine has problems, I think, and there's a war and there's Russian aggression and that, you know, Ukrainians uh, as a nation uh, can hold their heads up high, I think, because basically the morals and principles that we're fighting for are the ones that we're trying to the rest of the world. Mm -hmm. This is what you, this is what we're fighting for. Even though that uh, this war that is going on between, uh, well, Russia and Ukraine, if I may say that, mm -hmm. right now for five years now, it's not, um, it's not the type of war that the whole world is used to. It's like fifth, fifth generation new war, mm -hmm. right? Because it's a cyber war and it, it's not only w like weapons war. Since it's new, how high are the chances that Ukraine can actually win with the support of the international community? 
And, look, with, and by winning, <coughs> I mean getting Crimea back and getting mm. Donbass back, of course. Look, the, the question of, let's take one bit at a time. You're 100% right. We're fighting a new war, yeah. something that we've never been used to. You know, it's a bit like the Vietnam War. When the Vietnam War was on, um, there were different tactics used. Yeah. You know, uh, today, the interesting thing is that if you look at uh, and speak to people who have been fighting um, in, in the eastern of Ukraine, a lot of them will say to you this, we now understand what the Ukrainian insurgent army was. Mm. Upa, because we are the new Upa. We're fighting for the same reasons, the same enemy, um, but we have to use different diff different tactics. Yeah. How do you? I'm not a strategist, but if you speak to um, experts like uh, Professor Phil Carver, for example, from the Potomac Foundation mm -hmm. in um, in America, he has a bit of a plan about how strategically. Ukraine might be able to win this situation. So therefore, by bringing in experts who are experts in the field of, in, in this area, will obviously, obviously assist uh, Ukraine. In terms of uh, Crimea, again, that's going to be international pressure. You know, and, and I think from Poroshenko's point of view as, as president, I think the important thing is that, that people have heard is there is no there are no there aren't going to be any deals there are no deals and there's no discussion without us being at the table that strong position uh, I think is very important um, and and lastly you know if you're talking about a war a cyber war you're talking about well, why is this happening mm -hmm. because what you what he's tried to do what the Russian Federation Putin's tried to do I think is uh, keep Ukraine at bay in other words you won't be able to develop your economy you, nobody will talk to you there's a it's not working because ultimately um, Ukraine continues to exist. Um, Ukrainians continue want to develop. Mm -hmm. um, we do have a problem. We have to ask that international community to continue to support us. But on, under no circumstances, we're dealing no deals. with it, right? Yeah, no deals. Thank you so much Thank you. for coming. Thank you. That was Stefan Romani. He is the General Secretary of the Ukrainian World Congress and the Chairman of the Australian Federation of Ukrainian Organizations. Thank you so much for watching UATV. Stay tuned for the rest.